<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wild Pitches, Smokey's Baseball Podcast. What's poppin'? What's up, man? With uh, Eris, I'm Mick. Got the team back together. What's up, man? How's it going? It's a fantastic day to be alive, brother. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> looking good, feeling good. You got the mustache going. What so, do you think? What do you think? You know, your your mustache, Mick, or is it <laughs> Nicholas now? You yeah. know, it seems like you should be a little more distinguished. So, <laughs> you know, you you attribute the mustache to like Tom Selleck, yeah. or yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, definitely. So I think you and him, I think you guys are, like, identical. You know, Tom Selleck in his prime. Yeah, yeah. So. Like Magnum Tom Selleck. Right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Like, I was thinking, like, you know, there's some cool dudes that had mustaches. I mean, you gotta, you, you got to be able to have some confidence to walk out of the house like this, you know. Uh, but something like... <laughs> yeah, that's something, right? Something I always wanted to try, so... Um, you know, for right now, it is what it is. But I, I could never grow one. Like, I just... No way. Yeah, like, forever. Like, I just didn't grow face, facial hair. And so, um, you know, let it rip for a while, and I did, like, the whole thing, and then I just cut around, and then I'm like, okay, you know what, this thing's kind of, it, it's kind of holding, and, um, you know, with mustaches, you, you, you have to, uh, you just have to get used to it. You are, know? You, are you going to be that guy now? Are you going to get, like, the oils and the little comb <laughs> for man. it? Oh, I don't so. know. I, I don't know long-term, like, what, you know, the future of the mustache. I just felt like... You know, maybe the, you know, a couple of weeks. We'll see what what kind of what transpires and uh, yeah, well, <laughs> what good or bad things can happen <laughs> in my life with this on my face now. Yeah, so. I wanted to do a couple beer review shows with the uh, you know my beer review podcast at the Mustache, right? You know, in honor of Brick and my my old partner, um, and so that that was kind of the inspiration behind it, you know. And, and then I just kind of was like, all right, well, you know what? We'll just you know see how long this thing goes and. Um, so it's been like a week, you know. So that's, should, a week, so that's a week. Yeah, that's should, a week of not shaving. This is a or? week. No, well, this is a week with the mustache. Like, so oh, gotcha. To okay. cut the rest out, you know. So my strategy is, and you're a guy that has all kind of facial hair. You get it. All kinds, man. You, you, my you, forehead you, and my ears. Well, nose, I mean, you, yeah. you, is that the, that's like a chin strap now? I mean, but I've seen you with different styles of facial hair. Well, this is called negligence. So is you it? know, it's just me not shaving. So <laughs> you know, it's just I grow this beard so fast, <laughs> and it's like I want. Want to clean up and everything, but I just got no time to it. And hey, you know what? Whatever. Like, I have a fiance, so she's fine with it. So yeah. it's like fiance, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. You know? Well, tell us about this. No, we don't have to go into that just now. Why but, not? You Why know, not? Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. I mean, well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it happened a few months ago. Or whatever. Just decided to uh, pop the question, and you know, she said, "Of course." And uh, here we are now. So. When's the big date? Uh, no date set yet, but we're planning on at the beginning of next October. Okay. So, so a little just, bit a little bit in the future. Like kind so. of like a, a promise thing, like yeah. a promise ring. Here's your promise ring. I promise we're going to figure this out, but uh, let's do it, and uh, well, congratulations. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks. It's pretty you know, cool. It's definitely because of the negligence of the beard and everything. So. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, now's a good time. Like in just you, you go down to the locker room and you see the Smokies baseball team. Oh and yeah, a lot of mustaches down there. You know, long hair. So it's it's kind of the thing with the with the kids, you know. And I just think, hey, if they're doing it, I mean, why can't I try? You're it? a cool cat, man. Why not? Sure. <laughs> now here's here's the question. Now I, I really don't know the answer to this. Yeah. Um, why are mullets such a big thing? in baseball it's been something that's been going on for years you know and now i feel like it's really coming back and maybe it's more geographical with us being in the south and maybe it's because a couple country artists mm -hmm. you know are now rocking the mullet again but it seems like mullets have always been a thing in baseball is that something to do with the baseball cap and everything like why is that a thing yeah that's a good question you know when i was in high school they were popular and um, so not many years ago. No, right. I mean, but everything's you know everything comes back around, and uh, and then you didn't see them for a long time unless someone was um, you know you really had to be going for it. Yeah, to, to have a <laughs> mullet, right? Um, and it was like you might see them at you know like a George Strait concert or Hank Jr. concert, you know, like a country type thing, and then uh, then. Eastbound and Down came out, right. and uh, you know the star Kenny Powers had a mullet, 
And I don't know if that kind of brought it back, but Morgan Wallen, who's a country star from this area, he's got one. And then, you know, and then that kind of, all of a sudden, you just start seeing all these kids with mullets. Oh, they're all over the place. And I mean, I don't have a mullet. Mine's actually all one length, but I thought about it. Like, I did think about it. Like, you no know. No way. Yeah, really? I mean, just, to, just to do it, you know, just like the same thing as the mustache. I mean, not not to live with it forever, but you know, just try it out. Try yeah. it out and just just to, to laugh at myself and you know, and kind of have some fun with it. But uh, God, take as many photos as you can with the mustache. Yeah, this is so. right. So I mean, like, I'm gonna come in one day. I'm gonna have short hair and, a, and no mustache. And I'm gonna be boring. You know, I mean, like the guy, this guy right here in the picture, right? The guy <laughs> on the logo. Like, I'll we be need, right back we to need him. To put again. a mustache on his face right there. <laughs> Get a little sharpie or something. No, no. So, no, don't ruin the back. Drop because <laughs> <laughs> you know, as this show rolls on, you know, we'll be you know, we'll, who knows, we'll have like a million different looks. You actually look like your logo guy right now, for now, yeah, yeah you're right, you know. That. Well, let's talk uh, promotions, you know, it's and you're gonna have to drop this like today because we got we got so much to talk about. We haven't done a podcast together in a long time, and it's because the team was on the road for two weeks and. And you've been enjoying the wonderful weather that God has graced us yeah. on the road as well as home. Yeah, yeah. And we, <laughs> we actually had a podcast with Michael Ryan that I thought was really good, but, you know, and he's not with the team anymore, and it, and it was kind of like that spot in the rotation, and um, that's an entirely different topic for, I guess, right. another show, but, uh, you know, at the same time, um, you know, for the record, I thought he was an awesome guy, and I love that certainly. podcast. I think it's one of the best ones that we've done up here. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we wish him the best. He was nothing but great to everyone with the Smokies. But, um, you know, we're, those guys, are they work with the Cubs. They work through the Cubs. The Cubs pay them, not us. So, you know, the, the problems that people have, they have to, in, in their thing. You know, and we kind of, what people might not know that is that we have, we work for Boyd Sports, and we work with the Cubs, but they're not our boss, and we're not their boss. Yep, yep, working hand in hand. So you try to, yeah, you try to have a great relationship. You know, there's been some, you know, some front offices that we really clicked with that were, um, you know, that that were in tune with what we're doing. And then there's been some that, you know, you kind of feel like they don't really know what we do here, or care, and you know, and it's 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 it, it really. It's like the mullet. Like, it just kind of, you know, wow. circles around, you know, so. What a segue. Yeah. So you'd be able to throw it right back <laughs> on the mullet. But, um, so now we're back doing this again, and, and I, we have to put this out. Like, we're talking on July the 5th. We have to because we got to tell everyone about all the great promotions and stuff that, that are going on. That is this Saturday, dude. That's the big one. So. Like, that's the big one. Well, let's start there. Let's start there. I've even got this prepared right here. Boom. Great Fancy yeah, you living. Like you Here like we come. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Um, <laughs> all the hard work that goes into uh, all of these promotional nights. And um, 90s night was a huge success with the Turtles. People love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm late. I was late on the 90s night bandwagon. But <laughs> right. I, I was wrong. Hey, dude, the people love it. And, you know, what kind of worked out was... We ended up having a double header on '90s night, so the the fans got a little more bang for their buck. They yeah. got to listen to more of their favorite '90s tunes. They got to spend more time mm -hmm. with the Turtles. We had fun stuff on the video board in between inning stuff that we had that we throwed back to the '90s, and you know the people love it. And it, I know that you're not like oh whatever the '90s. It's not that long ago. It's not that interesting. Blah 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 blah. But hey, man. It's kind of weird to think about, but, you know, those kids in the 90s are all, like, adults now with yeah. young children, and they're like, oh, this seems like fun. I want to bring out, you know, my kids to see at least some of this or have an excuse to go out and go drinking, you know. Yeah, right. With the amount of different breweries and microbreweries there are and all that, it's like, well, they have, like, a... You know, they have a uh, pool table or they have a uh, whatever, like, little shuffleboard thing. Yeah. Like, that would be f good for the kids. They can come out and that while I go drink. You yeah, know, right. it's like, it's a good excuse to go out there and have fun. Yeah. So, well, uh, it's, I think nice night is that here, too. So. Right. No, I agree with that. I mean, you, you talk about all the different breweries, like Yeehaw, a ton of Yeehaw products. They're one of Tennessee's best beers, best, best breweries anyway. And then uh, High Wire, we got them, Wicked Weed, you know, and you go through, you know, all the domestics and... 
Um, it's just a, it's really, it's turned into a fun, you know, when you, you know, just for a beer connoisseur like me, a fun place to go because we have so many different flavors and, and breweries to try. So 90s night would have been a great time to do that. But I, I, the popularity of the turtles, I mean, these guys fly in from California. That's right. I mean, they're legit, yeah. you know. Um, they, they, they make it. I mean, like, to be able to have them come and, and they interact with fans, like you said, and it's it's the guys from the show. I mean, like the movie. Yeah, it, these are legit costumes, um, like from the 2012, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, film. And this, the guy that runs the whole show there for the turtles and the costumes and everything like that, he's a real cool guy. I've worked with him uh, since 2016, since I worked uh, in California, working for the Inland Empire 66ers. And uh, they're based out of California, just as you said, and they have the actual ninja turtle van the tmnt van really? now it doesn't go like on the road to far places right, like right. here but it's so cool you get to go inside it wow. and everything has the couches and the funky colors it's really awesome um and you know he says that you know uh, comic book conventions and all these other type of things like they literally pay for the whole you know transportation of the vehicle to go to their places because of how cool it is yeah and the thing that people don't know as well is the guy that operates this whole thing, his name's Jason Yabara, and he oh, yeah. Yeah, is Jason Yabara. the original Red Power Ranger stuntman. Yeah. He did all of the stunts for the Red Ranger. Yeah. Uh, Which I loved when I was a kid. Yeah. Super Power Ranger guy. I loved him. We used to have, like, we, we would pretend our bikes, you know, were like the, the, the Power Rangers, and you ride around in them and stuff. Yeah. It's nuts. Like, that's what he does. So, yeah. And he's also best friends with Vanilla Ice. Really? Yeah. Next yeah. Time, we should get him out here on 80s night. I right? wish. I wish. Yeah. Van, yeah. Van Winkle, is it? Or Rob Rob Van something? That sounds right. I think Van Winkle's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's cool. I so. like him. He does, like, a, a home building yeah. show. Yeah. Ice, Ice Baby. You know, like, yesterday... We were talking about, um, I was talking with Chris Allen, our, our team president, about old rappers. We were like Ice-T and Ice Cube, right? And how good the yeah. movie Friday was because um, Joe Rogan had Ice Cube on there and he was talking about writing uh, Friday, the movie, which we all liked. And um, and then I was talking about how I, heard, I saw a podcast where Ice-T was in the bathroom at a, at a bar in L.A. and a guy heard his voice and he's like, I need you for my movie which I think was Boys in the Hood, hmm. um, just off of hearing his voice. And they're like, what's all the ice? And I'm like, well, ice is like the word for diamonds. Right. You know, when that was kind of when Were it was you, coming did out. Did you teach Chris that? Oh, yeah, I was just passing <laughs> that street knowledge on <laughs> my time in Baltimore and, uh, and, and Trenton, New Jersey. You know, word. Like, well, I, yeah. I, know, I know these things. And then I was like, and then somebody, the other guy in there, Brian Johnson, it's like, well, what about vanilla ice? And I just started laughing. Like, Different type of ice there. Maybe. I don't know. Now, he's cool, though. I, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Uh, Elvis Knight was great again this year. Good job on that. Um, David Lee is so cool, man. Like the dude is ultimate Elvis, Elvis ultimate man. The Elvis. guy puts on a show, and he's a he really does. nice guy too. Yeah, you know, he's always about getting the crowd involved. Everything we got this. There was this little kid that showed up in an Elvis, Elvis costume, Elvis guy, yeah, and yeah. you know they got him up, sta up on the stage, and he like sh you know he was shaking his hips and all that, and he puts the the scarves on the gals and does the yeah. photos and all. So yeah, he's a he's a class act. You know, he's, yeah. he puts on a great show. So. And, and you had a bunch of other Elvises here too. Uh, and I know these are these are events that happen. I mean, I'm leading up to Grateful Dead Night, but it's they've you've done a great job. Your staff, you guys have put on an awesome show. And so Saturday, you guys that are watching, you need to be there. Maybe you're just listening, but um, so it's still like becoming one of the big events here. It is. It is. You know, this is something that this is our second year in a row doing it, yeah. but it's an oldie and a goodie. Yeah. So why don't you talk about the first time that we had Grateful Dead Night here yeah. and how much of a, a boom that was? Yeah, the first time was 2016, and I or maybe 2015. I, I begged them to do it though. I was like, we need to do one. You know, just imagine like you know, Smokies and Grateful Dead, and and so. Um, we had the Stolen Faces play, and then we did the jerseys, and it and it went well. Like it, you know, it was it was cool. Like it, you know. And then we, we kind of talked about it, and then we were going to do it, and then um, COVID happened, so we bring it back last year, and 
we put the concert like we did like the concert beforehand and you know I'm, yes yeah I, you guys know i'm a big deadhead i i want this to, you know i didn't envision it going as well as it did but i was just praying it went well because i just thought man if i asked you were, them to do it you were I, kind of a nervous wreck i was very for, for no reason whatsoever yeah. i'm all about like you know dude this is going to be great you know yeah. that you know you, as you put it your people my and people, i want my people coming? to come out to are the they game coming? so and then i'm on stage and the gates open and it was just like this mass of humanity that came through the gates with tie-dyed shirts and headed right down to the stage first time they've ever heard of baseball and they show up <laughs> yeah, here like they, they bought out <laughs> i kept telling the front office like maybe people these people buy they buy shirts. They, you know, they like posters. You know, so we did that. We sold out of the t-shirts before the like an hour before the game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh my god! It was like a, it was like a, a swarm of mummies coming at us from like um, the 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 Walking Dead. You know, yeah. they're coming down towards us, and I'm like, man, this is great. And what was so cool about last year is that uh, Christian, who's the lead singer of the Stolen Faces, and they're based out of Nashville, but they travel the south. They're the southern. You know, they're the big South um, dead, you know, tribute, tribute band. band. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like they play Alabama, Tennessee, um, you know, in the Ohio, Kentucky, Mississippi, you know, and, and every region probably has a, a really good dead band. These guys are awesome musicians and they're great. They let me pick the, 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 the set, set list last year mm -hmm. and that was awesome like I, I like I think that I remember talking to people I'm like I think the next song's going to be this and then they, they deviated a little bit just based <laughs> off of like the way that they you know do their songs but it was great the weather was great um, I thought the poster we went out and, and we got um, uh, Greg Gordon who last year that's who we used for the poster and he's um, one of the guys that does the dead and company posters for their different concerts and he's done a ton this year and he did it he killed it and then this year we got another one that's awesome i showed you yesterday yes yes Could show them the too i don't preview. care let's I, I mean so. i'll show you guys but just don't tell anyone until yeah we, until we publicly put it out there <laughs> right <laughs> but this but but this year i'm gonna sh put this up first right there so, okay so that's not ours that's from noblesville okay let me take that off of there, though, so you guys can see it. Got to get the full taste. Yeah, so this, he did the Dead & Company um, poster, cut, like, last week for the Noblesville concert um, on June 23rd. And then he did the all three posters for Colorado. Colorado this past weekend, and they were all great. And he kept telling me his name's Nate Duvall, and he's from, like, Massachusetts. He's like, man, I think I can do it. I'm really busy, da da da, you know. And I'm thinking, like, this guy's gonna blow me off. He's I'm gonna not, big ball you, right? Yeah, here, yeah. You know, He's but. not gonna end up doing it, and um, we're we're not gonna have a poster. I'm gonna have to go to our boss and basically be like, hey, we don't have a poster because um, you know I blew it. Here's is one of the ones from uh, this this week, and then this is for the this was the Saturday show in Boulder, Folsom Field. You guys can see that, and then this is the, this was this is I think this was the coolest one of them. This the July third one. It's like the Bears, but, but anyway, at the moment we've been waiting well, I'm, for I'm, here. Yeah, I'm, I'm setting up to it, right? And mm -hmm. so then all of a sudden, like he just pops back in my, you know, like hey, let's do this. And um, do you want me to show you the the first draft? I haven't seen the first. Okay, draft. let's yeah. just let's, let's talk about it now. Like, let's be, we're here. We got time. This is what our podcast is all about. All right, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to show the you the finished product. The, yes. I'm not going to show yeah. you the finished project. Now, mm -hmm. what I will show, tell you guys is that um, <laughs> is that I wasn't impressed by this first one. I sent this to uh, to Tim Volk, who's our GM, and him and I kind of were you know putting this thing together. I just run things by him, you know, um, and I'm like. Okay, here's the first one, and he, this is what we got. It's not colored, right there. Okay, All right. And what you weren't think? impressed. Well, what do you think? I mean, it's like I don't know. Like it looks like, like Tim said, it looked like clip art. You know, like it's like the bare head on a baseball yeah. pitcher's body. I definitely see that body being something. Like off the of mountains. Google, the so. mountains look like they're. Um, 
they look like they're like the Rocky Mountains and not the Smoky Mountains, you know. But this is how it always starts. I mean, it's like, it's hey. It's a rough draft. Yeah, it's a rough draft. So I sent back and I'm like, hey, you know what? I like some stuff. Like, I love the I love the way that Nate does color. Nobody does color better than Nate Duvall. Like, they, I wanted a poster that popped out at you. You know, like if you put it on the wall, you're like, you walk in the room and you're like, man, this made my day brighter. Right. And and next year we'll go a total different direction. You have to. Right. Like yeah. we'll go with another artist for this project. We'll use Nate for some other stuff for sure. Maybe one of some of the other Boyd Sports teams because he is awesome. But anyway, like so so I'm like, okay, um, I send that to Tim, we have a meeting and we're both like, Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, so I, so I send back. Why, Lord? Why have you forsaken well, us? Well, I send back, and I'm like, okay, here. I said, you know, we, we want to change this, and we want to change this. And um, and then the next day, I don't hear anything, and I'm like, and you're talking about like a week ago. I mean, this this was like. Crunch time, cr- yeah. Yeah, crunch time. So then we get this back, and then when this came, I'm like, okay, it's going to kick ass. This is where we turned the corner right here. <laughs> so what do you think? That's turned the corner. We turned the corner. Look at that. Look at that. Like the, it's like the bear, and he's you know, and he's kind of you got the sun and the baseball field mm-hmm. in there, and it and it's you know, so so we we sent back one more thing, and and then um, you know, here's the. Here's the final product. This is the poster, and I think it's incredible. I think he did a great I job. I love the sun. I like Look it all. Look so. at that, guys. You're going to be able to buy those. They're being right now screen printed in Nashville, and I've actually got to go drive and pick them up because we were so behind the ball. And that doesn't even do you do it justice. But they're eight, 18 by 24 posters. They're on the good poster board material. They're all screen printed, which is the way that you do them to make them art, right? So they're a little more expensive than like a poster that you buy at Walmart, but it's it's real art, you know? Like these things, they're, they're made like exactly like if you went to a dead show and you bought one of the posters, you buy them, you go there and you buy a poster and it's $65. The next day, if you didn't get one, they're 165 because they're, they're limited edition. So we, we, we thought this year we were gonna do, um, that's gonna be on a t-shirt as well. And you can pre-order those right now if you definitely want to have one. We actually have three different T-shirt designs, and um, we'll talk about that, too. I like that because, you know, it brings a variety. And I think the three different looks, you know, it encapsulates, you know, the dead and what everything they do. But, you know, it also gives people an option of what to wear. So, like... This, there's this black one that's kind of more like a rocker look. Yeah, tea, yeah. You know, it's I'm like a classic it black yeah. rocker tee. But then we have like the two other ones that are uh, kind of like a tie-dye look. It has different elements of the dead. And of course, you know, there's so many different logos and, you know, uh, you know, icons of the dead with Bertha and the turtles and... You know, it's like never ending. The skull. And you can do so, right, right. There's so many other things you can go along with. Yeah, it, and so. I'm going to pull it up here because we're going to talk about each one. And one of them was actually like, you know, you designed the jersey, and that's something else we're going to get into here in a second. But one of them, one of the T-shirts was purposely made because it kind of matches the theme of the night. And then the other one is because, um, yeah. That, <laughs> I'm trying to flip through here and find it. Here they go. Here they go. Okay. So here's the, the three T-shirts, guys, right there, right? So the one on the bottom, I'll enlarge that. I probably should have just put the graphic on there, but I didn't even know we were going to talk about this. That one right there, I think it's awesome. The blue one? The blue one, yeah. Mm-hmm. I love the coloring. I love the bear. You know, he's cool. Uh, that one's for sale right now. Then this one is kind of like the event. T. It's the it's Nate's you know logo with the bear doing something else. It has like the date on there. You know you love that. And then this one when you know and I was part of like kind of coming up with this, the concepts on these was to match your jersey. You know so if you're here for this night, you know it's about Bertha this time. You know like last year we did um, the bears. The bears. This year we did Bertha. You know maybe we'll do a Steely next year. You know the the Steal Your Face logo. But yeah I mean then look this thing turned we'll bring out. Bring her out great. here. Yeah, pull it out, and so look at that. So that's it's the same. It's the same chick. There she is. It's like so cool. 
So when you, when you designed this, how did you come up with this this idea? Well, you know, we thought that it would be a great idea to in, you know to include to talk about the um, you know to put Bertha on there because that's something that we didn't do last year. That's her right there with the roses on there, and that's just like straight from the Grateful Dead. You know, that's like the official. Uh, like design from them and we wanted to go all out with the whole Smokies text and this is a really funky looking text isn't that right Mick yeah, you is. know yeah goes great with it and with the with this it kind of has like the sleeves thing so it almost kind of looks like you're wearing like a black vest or something and then you're wearing this awesome full color flower like shirt underneath so yeah rocks that too and then uh, on the side, you know, has the seal your face. Yep, there's the steely, right? Oh, yeah. Very mm -hmm. cool. Got to have the With steely. With the bare head. With the bare head in there. In there. So. He's thinking about. <laughs> For the song, He's Gone. For those dead, dead heads that want to know, like, the, there's a line in this, the song, He's Gone. Steal the face right off your head. And, and that's where, you know, like, that inspired that. And then, you know, obviously Bertha, the song Bertha. That's what this was from. And they better play that. They better play that. They've got to play Bertha. Of course. They, they have, have to. to. You know? Like, Christian, you better play Bertha because there she is. And Althea, too, <laughs> just because. Um, some great songs. Well, you know, on field last year, I don't know if you saw it, but we did the Bertha base race, and we had three kids with skeletons yes, I do on their that. shoulders, and they race around the bases with her. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's going to be great, man. Like, I, I just, I, I'm so excited about this. Like, I, I, I am. I can't wait for the event this year to just see everybody. I, I was at the Dead Show in Atlanta, and I met some people, and they were, I was wearing my jersey from last year. And a lot of people came up and were like, I, I was there last year for it, or I'm going this year. And I thought that was so cool. I mean, you know, like just people, like, hey, we, we – you know, my family's coming in from out of town to go to the, the right. Smokies game right. for that night, you know. So there's there's just something magical about going to a dead show. I think they're the greatest rock band in our country's history. The fact that they, you know, Jerry Garcia has been dead since the, you know, the mid 90s and the music is it 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 fits the the way that our um technology's changed a lot. You know, what you, makes you say you, that? Well, when you used to have records you know, if you have like a 10 or 15 minute song, you know, it, it's like most of the record, right? Right. And, and everything was made for these like radio three minute songs, you know, you want a three minute and, uh, you know, two minutes and 50 seconds, three minutes, whatever, you know, play on radio. Well, the Dead never played on radio, you know, the, the not they play more now than they did back in the day, you know. Um, I mean, there's so much more mainstream now because of your iPad or, you know, your iPhone, and you can just sit there and listen to, like, the concerts. And what's really cool is that they went against the grain when it comes to people taping their concerts, recording, you know, like people come in and record, and Jerry Garcia was like, look, man, they paid for a ticket, they're there. Um, they they can have that show. Yeah. And then when they go out the next time, they're playing the same song, but they're playing a little different, you know. Or maybe they they'll have a lot of songs which will like it'll bleed into the next song and then bleed into another song and then it'll circle back and finish, you know. And they do it differently on in different shows. So each concert's different. And so now, you know, all of these recordings are out there you can listen to them on the dead xm station or you know different apps re-listen has them all on there you know where people have like different recordings of these shows and and it's turned jerry garcia into the most listened to guitarist in the history of our country you know because and he's been gone for like 30 he's years he's been gone for so. 30 years yeah. so the technology kind of caught that but the other part of it is that is that there's so many great songs and they're so like from the time that they started until the time that they end it like you you go through and for different reasons you like different songs like some of them have kind of a country and western type feel right uh they're definitely rock and blues like they were really their original singer was um was a guy named Pigpen who who you know died very young and then and in in the band's life right but he was kind of more of a blues artist and then Jerry's like this incredible like musician who was also a teacher. And then Bob Weir, who's the guy that's out there now with Dead and Company, was a young guy 
and, and, and he kind of had his thing, learned how to write music with those guys. Jerry was a great writer. And then they had a guy named Robert Hunter who was like just a, they're, that wrote a lot of the epic songs that, yeah. they, that they have and some incredible pieces. And it, the shows take you on a journey. And I think that's the coolest part about like you get together with Deadheads and they talk about like their favorite shows and, and the older generation that got to go see Jerry Garcia, you know, like you talk about like just crazy concerts that were played in different venues and people following them, um, the group around and, and, and having these experiences like, hey man, they played this and the way that they played it and, you know, so we, we've got to catch a little of that with Dead and Company, but um, it's just so much fun and, and that's what we were able to, I thought we captured that vibe last year. You know, it's, it's kind of funny because you started off uh, saying, you know, they're one of the greatest rock bands of all time, but it's like you could say that they're not rock. You know, mm-hmm. you could say that they're blues or full for okay, yeah. whatever it is, you know, but they're, they're in so many different genres and you really can't say that about a lot of bands out there. But that's what, so. that's what America's about though, man. Look at your heritage <laughs> compared to mine, you know, it's like, but we're kind of like this melting pot, you know, and, and that's the great part about our country is, you know, is like we had, we took in all these people from different places and then and put a, put us all together. And, and, you know, we've done some great things over the, you know, over the last couple centuries. And, and I think that, they kind of symbolize with their music that, you know, and when you go and look at the other, you know, who are the other American rock groups, you know, who are the best American bands? Like, and I've had this debate a lot, you know, I put the Eagles are up there, you know, they're fantastic. I think Len- to me, Leonard Skinner, it ha- had they not had the tragic plane crash, I mean, right. you talk about Southern rock. I mean, they're, I still love listening to Skinner. You know, I got a Skinner record for, um, the, some vinyl for my record player at home and I'm like man I just jam these guys out and they're so good you know they just it just sucks that you know they the the lead singer Ronnie Van Zant and them had to he died in the plane crash but they're great um maybe Aerosmith right you know? I mean I you know I love Aerosmith too mm-hmm. still do um saw them play live once and mm-hmm. my god like Steven Tyler that dude yeah. is just unreal how you know, he takes his voice from zero to 60, you yeah. know, just like that. Dude plays the piano. Like, he is such a talented guy, and they're so great live. Um, and I guess that's just a little bit more, you know. No, no, me, I, yeah. You know. But who else? I mean, so. do you, I, I put them in the top. Well, who else would you put in there? American groups, you know? like Right. Because people will say, well. I mean, you got to say, it's a rock band. It's like, right. I don't know, you we, know? Yeah, I mean, like, so much of our music in this country has been influenced from, you know, the Beatles, which is a British band. You right. know, U2 is ir- Irish, you know. Um, I mean, like, ACDC has so many ACDC's great... ACDC is another, yeah, they're great, a European every, band. Ev- every song of theirs is a hit, you know, it's like mm-hmm. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but you know what I'm saying? They're not they're, from here. Yeah, you know, they're so. European. Yeah, I mean, like, like we, we love them, but when you, like, boil it down to the, the, the longevity of, of the dead... It's crazy. I mean, it really is incredible that you know this is a band that came out in nineteen in the nineteen sixties. They started playing Hate Ashbury in the mid sixties, and then you know by the early seventies is when they really kind of caught what I like the most about them. I like that 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 funky you know like groove that they bring to to songs you know I, I love that I just love the creativity um, you know that there, there's a lot of impromptu with it you know John Mayer is with them now who would have thought John Mayer my body's a wonderland you know uh, <laughs> this guy yeah. is on Dave Chappelle show you know he and he's great like he's figured it out you know he gets up there and, and you know for right now I mean for a couple more weeks it's going to be part of the group and then after that it's Dead and Company's gone, and you know we'll see what happens. But um, I'm so I'm excited about Saturday. Did I miss anything? I mean, is there anything else that we're doing? I mean, I said that I said that the posters are going to be available. Only a hundred, though. So if you want one, that's that's half of what we sold last year. Yeah, because very we because so. we wanted to make it more of a hey, you know what? You got to be here to get this. So and there's still some left over from last year. Not many. But last year's poster, that's also a collector's item too. Um, so you got they're all numbered and you know and obviously screen printed and everything. 
we got the stolen faces gates open at 5 30 they'll play and then we'll have the game and then they'll be back after the fireworks that's right that's what makes it unique too because you're getting two shows two concerts so you know gates open up at 5 30 the show begins at 5 40 you know they play for an hour mm-hmm. and then Right after their set is done, we're going to play a baseball game here. Uh, and, you know, we're going to play Grateful Dead music throughout the game. Yeah. You know, we're going to have the fun video board transitions on the board and everything like that. We're going to do fun theme things on the field. Then we're going to have a Grateful Dead themed fireworks show. Then we're going to have another show by right. Stolen Faces. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it's like, my gosh, how much more can you <laughs> want? You know, like, yeah, last year when they, 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 they let me do this the set list, right? I, I just imagined like the fireworks are over. You know, you have that smoke in the air. The lights are coming <laughs> back on. Like, but you can't really see yet. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like, yeah. And oh, then all yeah. of a sudden, like, they just jam into, uh, you know, uh, helps on the way. Slipknot helps on the way. Like, da da did it, and they did it, and it was so good, you know. Like, so I, I'm curious to see what Christian and those guys put together this year, having gone through it, and you know, knowing like what kind of what we expect. If they if they would have asked me to do a set list again, I thought it would be cool to make like the first set uh, a lot of the country and western stuff that they that the dead did, you know, like kind of you know kicking off with some El Paso for those of you guys that are out there. Uh, you know, I, I love Brown Eyed Women. That's a great song. And, you know, since we do some moonshining around here, it's kind of a moonshiner song. But they said they don't do the same songs twice in the same venue. So, wow. But that, that's but, great. But that's cool. They can go about probably six different shows without playing the same stuff. But some stuff that they do, I, I don't remember what the whole set list was from last year. So I know that there was a ton of things that we didn't that we didn't get. Um, so I, I can't wait. Like, I just... I'm I'm just like a kid. This yeah, is like Christmas. You're giddy. For me. Yeah. yeah, I am. Yeah. Giddy. I am giddy. <laughs> so, all right. Well, let, so the, the two eight six twenty three hundred or smokiesbaseball dot com, and we can't wait to uh, to see you guys there. So, what else do we have? Let's let's hit this homestand a little more, and then I'm going to ask you about free hot dog night because that's that's <laughs> the that's pretty important. Yeah, yeah. right. Everybody's you asking know. me about this. So, well, I mean, we're capping things off the next day after the Grateful Dead night with our Christopher Morell bobblehead. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll touch on baseball a little bit here, but. You know, Christopher Morell, he played a whole season with us, played a month and a half or so uh, the following year, yeah. and he's just one of the most likable guys that you could ever, you know, get in contact with, baseball player or yeah. not, and the reason why so many people like him is because how nice of a guy that he really is, you know. He's smiling, he's laughing, yeah. he gives, you know, fist bumps to the to the kids he as he goes autographs. up, so... You know, he, he just looks like he's genuinely happy to be living life. And, you know, what? He, he should be. He's playing baseball for a career. And, uh, you know, he got to come here through Kodak. And uh, a lot of people over here are big Morell fans. And we're so excited that he's being so successful with the Chicago Cubs. Mm-hmm. And so first 1,000 fans through the gates on Sunday are going to get a Christopher Morell bobblehead. Nice. And uh, that's brought to you by Vanderbilt Mortgage and Finance. And the bobblehead's pretty cool. Um, obviously, it's him in his Smokies uniform and he's crossing home plate and every time that he hit a home run he always does kind of like a little bit of the half Sammy Sosa the yeah. kiss up and a point up yeah. uh, to the heavens there so you know the bobblehead is him crossing home plate pointing up to the air looking up so uh, relives the good days of him hitting home runs here at Smoky Stadium and yeah. of course you know some bombs kind of homage to uh, his debut with the Cubs which was a homer, isn't that right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Look, I'll give you my baseball breakdown of of Christopher Morrell. Um, he is what his one of his biggest strengths is his personality. I mean, you, you just can't not like the guy. You know, I, I saw a Cubs game the other day, and then somebody tweeted that he was signing autographs after the game, like everybody else went in, and he's he's just such a great person. I, I was at the hotel in Huntsville, and the lady checking me in has a son that plays ball. And she said, yeah, and, you know, we go to the game, and Christopher gave him his bat and took a picture. And, you know, it's like he just touches lives, you know. He he gets that it's about the fans, and I don't know that all the players anymore appreciate that or that they give time for that right. stuff. But he's, he's still doing that, and I hope that never changes. You know, as a player, I'm really surprised at the level of success that he's had because his first year with the Smokies, you know, he just made so many 
unforced errors, you know, mental errors. Um, but he's this great athlete, and he can overcome some of that with the fact that he's a physical specimen, right? But it's, it's learning to play the game and play the game smart at that level. I think that's why he started this season in Iowa, not in the big leagues, you know. But he's just so good. He's, I think he's the team leader in home runs, and if he's not, he's tied, right, uh, with the Cubs. And I think if he, you take his Iowa home runs and his Cubs home runs, I mean, he, he's, like, on pace to hit over 50. I mean, he was the, you know, the 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 player of the month in yeah. that league that I was in in yeah. April. So yeah, I mean yeah. he he rocketed out of the gate. Oh, he didn't shout, so, you know. Yeah, but. It's it, it's and, and I know the problem that the Cubs are having, you know, it's it's that they know that he has to improve. Baseball just isn't the home runs and the RBIs. It's also knowing you know, we had a game last night, and a guy gets picked off at first yeah. with two outs and a runner at first and second. With a runner on second, yeah, you like get you're picked no, off at first. Yeah, you can't get picked <laughs> off at first. And it's a, it's a young guy, and, you know, he's learning the game at this level, and he's a really talented player. But mentally, it's it, there's a lot there. It's tough. You know, and, and Morel's a young guy too, you know, so you got to make those mistakes and learn from them. You know, uh, to 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 kind of get to the big leagues, and um, you know, it, because they're magnified there, and I think that's that's been his biggest issue. But he, they kept him down, and then they bring him back up, and he's sitting home runs every night. And you'll watch him play, and it's like, you know, one at bat, he's he's out because. He struck out, but it's because he was in the batter's box at the right time. Man, you know? And then yeah. the next time up, he's like down two strikes and hits a 450 foot home run to tie the game or win it. You know, it's like, you know, so he's fun to watch. He's just, he's got to keep improving on the, the little things that go along with the game. Uh, and, and I know that's. I know that's what the Cubs are hoping, but I don't think the Cubs are going to be a team that contends anyway. So this is a good year for a guy like him yeah. to go ahead and, and make his mistakes and learn. And Dave Ross, the Cubs manager, is, is such a good baseball technician. Uh, you know, it's it's just up to Morrell to, to pick all of that stuff up. But he's been – it's really been surprising, and he's become a, a fan favorite. So Sunday, 2 o'clock, what time do the gates open? 1? Yeah, gates open up at 1 o'clock this Sunday. Yeah, so. be there early. I mean, and you guys normally are. I mean, when we have the giveaways, I'm always amazed when I look out and see how many people are there. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, my hope is – you know, we get downtown and, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we add a, like, some more bobbleheads. I think we're going to have to. I know? think we're going to have to just with the ease of how many people can just, you know, take a quick little trip downtown. Yeah. And, you know, people are going to be hustling and bustling anyway downtown, getting a bite to eat, having a drink, whatever it is. And then they decide, you know what? Well, there's a game tonight. Yeah. Let's just go up and uh, get in line, have some fun tonight. You know, it's not part of their plans, but because it's right there. Hey, we might as well go ahead and uh, see what's going on in Smokies. So. Yeah. And so, uh, finally, uh, last thing I think we should talk about today. Most importantly. Well, most importantly, right? The Cubs had their, uh, the, or the, the Cubs, uh, the, 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 the Boyds and Boyd Sports and downtown Knoxville had the official groundbreaking since we talked last on the new stadium. So they'd been working on it. But Randy and Jenny were there. Doug Kershaw has worked really hard on this. It's been, you know, one of the projects that his his entire career is based on. You know, yeah. how this thing turns out. I mean, he's he, he's really you know taken this project by the horns, and and he's been riding off with it and doing you know some great stuff. Chris Allen, obviously, uh, the you know every everybody's kind of seeing this thing come together, and I mean it's it's happening. Your thoughts on the fact that 2025. This thing should be ready. Hey, you know, it's finally happening. So this is something where, you know, I moved here and I started working for the Smokies in uh, the fall of 2018 at the conclusion of the 2018 season. And part of the reason why I was brought here was because of, hey, we're going to have a new ballpark coming to downtown Knoxville. It's going to be state of the art. It's going to be new. It's going to be sexy. People are going to want to come here and see the latest technology, see what we have to offer. We want you to be one of the decision makers in that. And I'm like, that sounds awesome. Like, I definitely want to be a part of that. And then, you know, 
things take a little bit of a turn, and yeah, you know, everything's moving fine, but now there's this vote that's happening, there's a little blockade when it comes to this building, this certain part isn't that as simple, Mm -hmm. Um, so things take a step backwards. Then, you know, the end of the world happened in 2020, so that just stopped everything, and then with that, prices go up on certain things, and you have to rebudget things, and you have to work with new contractors, and so on and so forth, but you know what? The, The shovels are finally in the dirt, you know? The drills are actually going through the cement, and things are actually happening now with the, um, the groundbreaking that took place, and it just gets people more and more, more and more riled up about it of how this is going to happen. This is coming to downtown Knoxville right by the bridge by Barley's. Yeah, you know, this yeah, is something that people cool. are going to see driving down Route 40. You're going to see the new ballpark, so... Yeah, it's uh, you know what I, I'm. There's a it's mixed feelings for me. You know, I've been here a long time, and and I've had some really good memories here. Um, I, unfortunately, they're not championship memories, but that's the Cubs and not the Smokies <laughs> front office that can handle that. <laughs> but besides that, you know, um, and, and you know, anybody with the Cubs is listening. Be great to kind of fix that before we get out of here. Um, Do you see Randy's tweet? No. Uh, you know, after the groundbreaking took place, and yeah. he, there's like a, he posted four photos, and one's like him and his wife, yeah. you know, at the at the little podium, and then there's the there's a a packed house here at Smoky Stadium, and then there's just a picture of the 2016 Cubs winning the World Series, and it's like that sh- that would be so much better if it's like the Smokies yeah, winning the championship, right. not. The well, Cubs. How, how does <laughs> what I don't understand is you're talking about a ten-team league, and how do you not win one since 1978? Like you tell you, me, dude. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's like sometimes I feel like you know it's bad luck. Sometimes I feel like we're down to eight teams now. I know now you know, we're down like, to eight teams, right? And, <laughs> and then I feel like and half the teams make the playoffs. I, I, I know. <laughs> I know. I feel like the uh, I, I I just. I don't know. I don't even want to give my true opinion because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But I, it, it's, it is ridiculous. Like it, it's at some point you gotta, you, you gotta go for it. You know, like I, I know. Well, we're not trying to win there. I mean, like, listen, developing and winning go hand in hand, because winning is a mindset that you want to have all the way through your organization to the big leagues. And, and, and a lot of teams do have that, and, uh, and you know, they win World Series, you know. And so the Cubs won one uh, in 108 years, and we haven't won one. We have, this, I think, the second longest drought in minor league baseball without an on-field championship. So. And it's just so funny because I recall, like, these were your words, you know, speaking about last year. It's like, we're going to fall into it. We're going to fall into a championship here. We didn't, have to, we right? didn't. We didn't dominate the whole league all year, you know. We didn't have the best players. We didn't have the MVP of the league, you right, know. Right. But there we were on the cusp, about to fall into the championship. And then we so. promote we, we promote our star <laughs> center fielder to go sit on the bench in Iowa. And you're like, man, I mean, like, we, we don't have anybody that can catch the ball now, man. Like, or hit it. The guy, what are we doing? Go into the playoffs and you just got to win four games. The first team to win four games we wins the whole thing. Yeah, like. we went through. <laughs> we went through. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's it's so frustrating. You know, it would just be nice for our fans too. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But you, the the one thing I can tell you is that our organization and uh, uh, Randy and Jenny Boyd have owned the team for ten years. The, they really care about us. You know, their employees, they care about the Cubs. They love the Cubs. They love the players, the Cubs players, the Smokies. They love the fans. And they love the community. You know, like they have the pillars of, of, of the success that, that they believe in. And um, it's been a great 10 years, man. I mean, I've been here for every day of it. Like, I, I can't say enough good about them and the environment that they've created. Yeah. And, and when I look at the other teams in the league, I compare Pensacola to the Smokies. I think you know, franchise-wise, uh, they're, they're very similar because of, you know, Quint Studer the owner of the Blue Wahoos, and he's in the community, and he's doing a lot of stuff there. And, and you can't, and you know, I know Quint. You can't not know him, right? And I think, like, Randy's the same way. Like, he just, he cares about the community, and he cares about the, the, the people that work here. And um, 
it's been a decade that's gone by like that. I just think that it would be so special to be there to win a championship and see the look on his face one day. You know, it's like, hey, man. With that mustache. We, well, I don't know that the mustache <laughs> is staying, dude. I, I'm, I like the stash, but I don't know yet. If, if it meant us, if, we, if, if the Smokies, we could win the championship, I'd do the stash for a year. Yeah. Stash exactly. for a year. If that's, if that's what it took. I would sacrifice that. All right. Well, anything else? You got anything else you want to get into before we um, pack it up today? Free hot dog night's coming up on August. Free hot dog man. night, bro. Tell us about free hot dog night. All the glizzies. What day? That you what can day? Eat. What day? It's a Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday, August first is free hot dog night. Now, earlier this year, we had a dollar hot dog night, and the game got rained out. We never got to play the game. You know, the gates opened up. We tried to get the game in, but it just was not going to happen. The rain didn't stop. So, you know, we ended up selling 1,300 hot dogs at a baseball game that never happened. That's nice. Which was awesome. You know, it's great. Dollar dog night. But now take it to the next level. We're cranking it up. And what day did you say it was? Free August. hot dog night, August 1st. August 1st. First day of August, first day in your heart. There Dude, you go, right there. So there's the there's the graphic. So how does it work? I mean, like, are you, you don't eat? You show up and then you just gorge yourself. All right, but man. what's the catch? I mean, what's the catch? Like free beer night, you have to have one of the beer, you know, the beer cups. All right, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Okay, tell me. There is no catch. You just have to come to the game. No dude. way. Yes, it is not something where oh, it's first pitch. Here you go. Here's your free hot dog, one per inning or anything like that. No. It's you show up and you eat as many hot dogs as you can. There is no limit to the amount of hot dogs that you can eat. All right, all right, but what, but uh, there will be a limit on how many that you can order per transaction. It's mm -hmm. not as if you're well, going to walk fair. up. You yeah, know. I mean, like you get two dogs and get out of the way. So the next it's break. like you're not going to go up and give me fifty say, dogs. Give me fifty hot dogs. And it's like, well, wait a minute, dude. Yeah, what about no, no, the no. fifty people that are standing behind you? Right. They can't order fifty hot dogs no, too. No, you no, know? Like, that's so. fair. You're saying that the catch is. You're going to be limited to like a dog, a, d a dog, or two dogs per person. A couple of dogs, yeah. Well, and I don't move think on, it's let the next guy get his free dogs. Yeah, exactly. You know? So get who, back who in the came line up with this? It. How are we going to? I mean, like d these people are going to eat every <laughs> hot dog we have. It's going to be really something, dude. I would do the same thing. You so know? you're saying there's no like, there's no catch? No, dude. Double fisting. You know, it's just going to be <laughs> incredible. <laughs> the thing is, you know, there's going to be so much meat all over the place oh my in gosh. here. Imagine Imagine all the aluminum foil that's going to be on the ground Man. at the end of the day. I mean, I, the, I feel so bad for the ketchup and mustard dispensers, man. Whoa. Like, those things are going to be toast. Yeah. Like, those pump ones, man, yeah, they're going to yeah. be broken at the end of the night. I've never even heard of this before, like a free hot dog night. Like, I've never heard of this before. I'm, I didn't even know that this – is this just something that you guys just came up with? Just came up with it, yeah. Why not? The you free know? beer night, we, we, you know, somebody else did that first. It wasn't our idea. And, you know, it, it's But I've never heard of a free so. hot dog night. <laughs> Dude, free hot dogs. Now, here's something that's interesting. So last year, you know, th this is something that we've built upon from last year. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had uh, our dollar dog night, and it was on a Thursday. It was the highest attendance third is Thursday game of the whole year. Right. You know, just with the fact of, hey, it's dollar dog night, right? And once again, it was a shame this year that our Tuesday game got rained out. Right. We had 1,300 hot dogs sold, and we never had a first pitch. Just imagine if we played a three-hour yeah, right. game afterward. Good Lord, how many more hot dogs could we have sold that day, right? It would have been just a massacre. So. It would have been a hot dog massacre. <laughs> <laughs> so, so all you got to do, I, I just let me get this right. For, have a ticket to the game. You just get a ticket to the game on August 1st. Bring some Alka Seltzer, and you you know you just get free hot dogs. You just get free hot dogs. I don't. I'm, I'm not buying this. This is fake. It's not fake news. That's I crazy. know you don't like fake news. I don't. So. Okay, well that's cool. Yeah, I mean like so it is what it is. It's. I mean free fly hot dog in night. and get it done. I know you can't be like Joey Jaws Chestnut. I know. You know doing the 62 in 10 minutes, but you don't have to do 62 in 10 minutes. You can do 62 over the span of a whole Smokies game. I I'll say this: Nathan's made a mistake kicking Kobayashi out because we used to have Chestnut yeah. against Kobayashi. Yeah. Now there's no competition. We're, we're, I mean, because Kobayashi signed a deal with another hot dog company. 
And that's a damn shame because, you know, just as you said, how many years is it now? 16 years in a row or something like that? He's won eight years in a row, but he's won 16 of them. Okay, yeah. But but he couldn't beat Kobayashi. That's a shame. Yeah, because there's no parody now. Now there's no parody. You know, it's kind of funny because... You know, you're watching the hot dog competition, but the corner of the screen is the picture in picture, and it's just chestnut in the corner, and then they gotta have to go through all the other losers, you know? Yeah, like, right, right. Oh, here's what's his face. He's it's eating not the even most close. like he, he's eating the most like blueberry pies in 15 minutes. Yeah, but, right. You know, he's gonna end up like 20 dogs behind yeah, chestnut. Yeah, right. And so. he and and look, those guys, they they they're in there like they're like the the generals against the globe trot. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just getting dunked Red clots and the generals, man. He's going to trot that team out there just to take an L. They're so. like the party animals, uh, you know, taking on uh, the Savannah Bananas. Like they don't have a shot. All right. Well, cool. Well, Eris, it's been fun, man. Uh, it, this got got to get this up today because uh, everyone's going to want to hear about all this great Wild stuff. Wild pitches. Wild pitches. Guys, look, do us a solid, too, man. Uh, like and follow at Smokey's Baseball if you're watching on our YouTube channel or you're listening or however you get there and however you're hanging out with us today. We really appreciate it. We want to see you at the ballpark. So like and follow and, and be part of Smokey's Baseball. We're going to be back. Eris will be doing some interviews and some podcasting. That's I'll right. be doing it. We'll do it together. We'll try to get as many of these out as we can. And we appreciate all of you guys. And uh, can't wait to see you on Saturday. Maybe I'll see you on Sunday. Maybe I'll see you on Thursday. How, wh- whatever it is. <laughs> we'll see you, all right? Thank you guys for hanging out with us. And uh, that's it. That's, it. that's another. It's a wrap. Night-night. <laughs>